Hey, what's up? It is Dan or DMAD96 here, and welcome back to our F1 Manager crew mode with Stuart GP. And last time out at the Belgian Grand Prix, it was Retirement Central that was. We had some big names retiring that race, such as Mika Hakkinen, David Coulthard, and Eddie Irvine. And because of that, we finished in second. Barrichello, unfortunately, did retire from the race. A shame there. But we finished second which keeps us fourth in the championship, but more importantly, Michael Schumacher is only nine points off Mega Hakkinen and could potentially take the lead of the championship this weekend. This championship battle is getting very interesting now. In the Constructors' Championship, we still sit in fourth, only two points behind Jordan despite beating him in Belgium, but uh, Damon Hill also finished on the podium. It's looking close for the battle for third, but McLaren, it looks like they can secure the Constructors' Championship very, very soon. I don't know if it's this weekend or the next weekend, but they have pretty much won it already, to be honest. Two teams still yet to get up for Mark, but as we know, Arrows won't be taking part in the rest of the season due to their lack of engines. And in the team manager championship, we're still leading that, but Eddie Jordan and Ron Dennis are slowly catching us up. So it's all very interesting in the championship so far. But this weekend, we're going to be doing the Italian Grand Prix at the uh, Monza Circuit, of course. Uh, a track which obviously um, is high speed, so Mercedes probably will be quicker with their engines. But it is Ferrari territory. Could we see Michael Schumacher do well? Will this be an advantage for the team? We just don't know yet. It's going to be very interesting once we actually get into the uh, practice session. And hopefully we can get a decent result like we did in um, Belgium. We're slowly getting the second half of the season together after a few disappointing race offs in France, in Britain and Austria. We didn't score points. We had a third in Germany. We scored one point in Hungary, and then we finished second in the last race in Belgium. It's going to be interesting going to this weekend. I don't know what's going to happen, but before we actually start off the weekend, let's go straight into the news report. BER opened the news this week with the re-signing of technical director Malcolm Osler, a good decision made by the team who have been struggling lots in recent times. Williams have picked up Stefan Sarazan from Prost to take over Bruno Junquera's duties as test driver, and finally the Arrows team complete their draft lineup with Benton's Laurent Redon also joining as a test driver. With the support of the Tifosi, can Michael Schumacher take the lead of the Drivers' Championship this weekend? Let's go down to the track and take a look at the practice results. So, practice has just finished and it's Mick Hakkinen from Michael Schumacher, David Coulthard and Eddie Irvine in the standard uh, practice results. Um, well, we were second and third for quite a while, but then um, Hakkinen, Schumacher and Irvine all set pretty good laps in to beat us, so unfortunately we're down 6th and 7th. Damon Hill, uh, our closest championship rival for Johnny Herbert as well, and Jordan are going to be pushing strong this weekend if they want to beat us. We need to try and beat them both if we can, if we want any chance of beating them in the Constructors' Championship. But we are 6th and 7th, head of fight in South Frenston. The usual suspects uh, filling out for remaining positions in practice, and of course um, Arrows, both drivers have run out of engines, so they will not be taking part for the rest of the season. So with that in mind, can Hacken still repeat his form in the next session? It's time to move on to the qualifying report. In a 2x2 two two style format, Minardi were the slowest two drives in 20th and 19th. Prost, Sauber and BAR all line up ahead, continuing the 2x2 two two formation all the way up to 13th. Williams are the only team not to line up next to each other with Raul Schumacher 9th and Alex Zanardi 12th at his home race. Both Benetton's line up in between the Williams cars in 10th and 11th. The Stewarts put on an excellent showing to line up 5th and 6th ahead of the two Jordans who line up on row 4 just behind. Michael Schumacher and Eddie Irvine couldn't bring good fortunes for the Tifosi as they both miss out on the front row, which means that Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard will lock out the front row here at Monza for McLaren, with the Finn taking pole position, hoping to find some good luck after a poor start to the second half of this season. And the two Arrows drivers weren't able to settle lap time due to the team running out of engines, and therefore will no longer take part in the remaining four races of the season. Alright, so qualifying's just finished, and... It's going to be a one-stop strategy for today's race for both drivers, as uh, the, the team are expecting low tyre wear, and obviously Mons is a very fast track, so it will be a one-stop race. And for qualifying, could it get any more Noah's Art like? You've got two McLarens, from two Ferraris, from two Stewarts, from two Jordans, and then Williams just ruin it completely by having Benetton in between, and then it's B.A.R. Sauber, Prost, and Minardi. So. Interesting qualifying session, really. Uh, hopefully the race will be good. 
Uh, retirements may be a factor in this race, we don't know. We're starting fifth and sixth, uh, higher than the Jordans. A result like this could actually uh, leapfrog us ahead of him in the championship. It's going to be a good one. We'll be lucky if we can beat the top four, but let's get straight into the race and see what happens. On board with Rubens Barrichello, and we are underway, and it's a decent start for Rubens. He stays in fifth. The top four already getting onto the best starts, as we've seen them already starting to pull away. Everyone getting off the grid well. And you can see Hacken and Steel leads going down into turn, well, turn two, I think it is. Obviously, there's only one chicane in the actual Monza track now, but Barrichello in fifth position behind the two Ferraris can just about see them, but those McLarens are pulling away from the two Ferraris uh, behind them. You can see uh, we're pulling away from the Jordans as well, but it's Mick Hacken that leads after the first few laps here in Monza, and the top six stays the same. It's happened again. For the fourth consecutive race, Mika Hakkinen is out. That is a shock. A driver error. Could the pressure be getting to Mika Hakkinen? He retired in Germany. He's retired in Hungary. He retired in Belgium. And once again, after lap one of his Grand Prix, he's out. Just like Germany. We're in fourth and fifth. A podium could be on the cards here. We're slowly putting away from the Jordan boys as well. But it's David Coulthard's race to lose out in front. Schumacher needs the win though if he wants to overtake Hacken in the championship. Okay, we're eight seconds out of Frensen. I'm going to keep it on push for about lap 10 or 15 and see what happens. Nothing interesting happening at the minute. Frensen is slowly catching up. We are going to put it back onto push. Irvine's. Barrichello is keeping in range of Irvine here. Could get him in the pit stops, I don't know. So a lot of engine failures, both Minardi's are out, uh, Diniz is out of engine failure, and both Prost have retired as well, but for completely different reasons. Uh, 14 drivers remaining, I think this could be a very high attrition race here. It'd be brilliant if the two Ferraris and Coulthard could retire as well, and we could win the race. Is Eddie Irvine out again? Eddie Irvine, a Ferrari just favouriting Michael Schumacher here, by just making Eddie Irvine retire in every single race. He's, he won one race in France, and he's out in this one, he is... 14th and out of race for driver error. Both our drivers still sitting in a decent position, but Frenson slowly catching up. We're going to put Johnny Herbert back onto push, and the same for Barrichello. We both need to pull away from that Jordan behind, and he is putting us under a lot of pressure. Uh, Barrichello is due into the pits at the end of this lap. Here we are on board with a man currently sitting in third place. Will he stay ahead of Heinz South Frenson after the pit stop? Already driving quite slowly. Where is Herbert behind? Obviously, um, they can actually hold each other up by uh, entering the pit lane. It's a bit stupid, this game, I know. So here we are going into the pit lane. Rubens Barrichello into his pit box. Is it going to be a good time? Hope it is. Frenson's come round the uh, Parabolica about now. I think we're going to rejoin ahead of him. Well, Barrichello certainly is. Yep, Barrichello's ahead of Frenson. I do believe he is. Yep. Barrichello keeps his uh, lead over Frenson. Will Johnny Herbert? That is the important question. Both drivers are on push to gain some time, though. Johnny Herbert's into the pits. And he's behind Heinz South Frenson. Bollocks. Well, we're, we've been quicker than the Jordan, so we should be able to... I think he should be able to catch him up and pass him. But the it depends how far he is behind. He is right behind him, though. Only one second. Frenson can still be overtaken. Meanwhile, David Coulthard still leads this Italian Grand Prix, and by quite a way from Michael Schumacher as well. We don't want to count Coulthard out of this championship battle completely, but he could technically save it for his teammate. Both drivers back into third and fourth position now. The gap to Frentzen is three seconds. Barrichello's miles ahead. Oh, Michael Schumacher's out! Michael Schumacher's out! Barge board's failure for... The well, he could have been the championship leader after his race, but that is an absolute lifeline there for Mika Hakkinen. And wow, this is exciting now. We're now second and third. Both of our cars are on the podium here. We could potentially get a double podium finish. Barely any cars remaining. We're just going to hold position. I doubt Frentz is going to catch back up to us. If he does, it would be a bloody shock. Um, he is 17 seconds behind. I doubt he will. And here we are on board with the Scott. In the McLaren, sitting third in the championship. I don't know if this win's going to make any impact whatsoever, but David Coulthard comes on to the back straight. He's just about to lap one of our drivers, but I don't think we can care right now because we're on course for our best result of the season. 
round the Parabolica for the final time for David Kilfard. And with Schumacher retiring, Hakkinen retiring, is Kilfard going to gain in the championship? I have no idea, but David Kilfard anyway wins in Monza his fourth race win of the season. And after retirement, he suffers in the last race. This is a good return to form for him. But the main subject here, the Stewart team, are on course to get their best result of the season. Rubens Varichello, round for Parabolica for the final time. It's going to be second place for the Brazilian, his best result of the season. And a fantastic return to form. And his first podium finish isn't actually a third place as well. Second place for Barrichello. It's third place for Johnny Herbert. And an absolutely outstanding result for the team. Excellent form from the boys. Our best result of the season so far. And only going to be, it's only going to be six finishes. As I say that, uh, 50 Keller just retired on the final lap. Frenson and Hill can fall from fifth. And then Jack Verno rounds up the final points paying position might be three laps down but what a result from us there and that's surely going to put us back out of Jordan the Constructors Championship. So in the Drivers Championship it's looking very interesting. David Coulthard has to win the next three rounds if he wants any chance of winning this championship. It's looking unlikely for him. I think it's still going to be between Schumacher and Hakkinen but Coulthard we're not going to rule him out of this completely. He has been unlucky this season, but he's slowly getting his form back together. Meanwhile, we are still in fourth position with Johnny Herbert, but Barrichello is now improving up to, I believe that is eighth so far. So, a brilliant 2-3 from the team. <laughs> a fantastic result. In the Constructors' Championship, we have moved ahead of Jordan only by three points for him. Third place could still be ours. McLaren on 114 points thanks to Coulthard's win and can secure the title next time out of a European Grand Prix if they can just get a good result really and beat Ferrari. Still Aras and Minardi yet to get off a mark, of course Aras can't get off a mark so Minardi the only team that are still actually yet to score that could still score and the team managed championship I think it's safe to say we've won that really with that 2-3 result. Ron Dennis moves back into second, John Tott into third and despite finishing fourth and fifth Eddie Jordan drops from second to fifth in the team manager standings behind Prost who I don't think got either car to the finish. That makes perfect sense. Apart from that, the rest of it really staying pretty much the same. So that has been the Italian Grand Prix. And what a race it has been. A 2-3 finish. We're back ahead of Jordan in the Constructors' Championship. And this battle is still not over. But next time we're going to be moving to the Nürburgring, the European Grand Prix. And speaking of double podium finishes, this actually happened for Stuart GP in the real life 1999 European Grand Prix. Johnny Herbert took a race win. Uh, obviously, the game doesn't recognise that history. I don't think that's going to happen in uh, the next race. But you never know anything happened in this game. Uh, it could just, could just be multiple retirements. But hopefully we can uh, do well. And once again, another podium finish would be nice. Only three rounds to go. And the championship is still very much wide open in the drivers. Schumacher is only nine points off Hakkinen. And Coulthard is still very much in this battle. McLaren can secure the Constructors Championship next weekend. But I'd like to thank you guys all for watching. If you have, please leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Until next time, guys, I'll see you at Nürburgring. This has been D-Man96. I'll catch you guys later. You pull apart, so you fight, and I know there's something between us with nothing inside. Nothing at all. You pull apart, so you fight.